All right, welcome back. I trust you have actually gotten one or two tips from there. Now, it is crucial to understand the potential benefit and risks of AI in the workplace, as well as the ethical implications of using AI to make decisions that affect human lives. As AI continues to evolve, it is essential that individuals and organizations alike stay informed and adapt to the changing landscape of work. Now joining me this time around to discuss further is certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert, Rume Dominic. Many thanks for joining me, Rume. Thank you very much for having me. All right, let's talk about the impact on artificial intelligence on jobs now. One of the biggest questions surrounding AI and the future of work is what impact it will have on employment. So now, will AI create new jobs or displace existing ones? So what types of jobs are most likely to be affected? Rume. Uh, truly, AI will definitely displace a lot of jobs and create new jobs. Because I remember in, let's say, five, ten years ago, you would have seen like a lot of, um, even here in Nigeria, you would have seen a lot of traffic waters. You would have seen those guys actually controlling the flow of traffic on the streets. But right now, in Lagos State here, we have a lot of automated um, traffic lights that are using artificial intelligence machines, not to talk of what we have in much more advanced countries like Dubai, China, and USA. So such type of jobs like you see right now have started becoming displaced. Artificial intelligence, truly, it's not something that should be looked at as a bad thing. It's something we should look at as a tool that can amplify our work. And when okay. I say a tool that can amplify our work, how do I mean? Whatever task a human is doing, it can make it much more efficient for that human to be able to do it faster and then see that the human is able to produce much more of that particular work in repetitive times over and over again because it is going to be making your work faster. Let's say, for example, you saw um, even with if you, let's say you 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 had the washing machine and maybe you, you your washing machine gets broken, you would not like to maybe use your hands to start washing those clothes or maybe those plates. You would like to maybe get a replacement for that because of the routine task and how difficult it is. That's how it would be almost impossible to go back to. A situation where we are going to be using archaic things to be able to perform tasks that quickly machines can really, really perform. It will produce job opportunities because when you go online now, you see experts like ChatGPT. You see job requirement like you have to be experts in ChatGPT. You have to be experts in using chatbots. And you can see that people that have learned how to be able to use this type of AI tools are now getting new job opportunities in blue chip companies. And then it will also see that people in work, truly must get uh, continuous lifelong learning training. Yeah, I, I was going to ask. I was going to. I was going to ask that, uh, Dominic, uh, because you actually uh, trying to say everything at the same time. But then again, uh, as AI becomes more prevalent in the workplace, I'm sure it's likely that workers will need to develop new skills in order to keep up. How can companies and organizations help workers develop these skills? Yes, truly, when you look at industries like the banking sector, industries like the health sector, you see that they need to be to develop new skills and upskill their workers, also reskill their workers to be able to take advantage of this emerging technology. And the way that they can go about it is to be able to partner with professional institutions like the Vorem Limited Company and see that courses like AI, artificial intelligence, blockchain master classes that see that the tools that are needed to be able to amplify their work, because you see, you can use AI, augmented reality, virtual reality, to be able to just, for the health sector, instead of putting in those injection noodles into their skin, right? You can mm. use AI things to be able to ensure that that process is simplified, and you can just maybe use the infrared rays to be able to do that. And then they should be able to take advantage of learning or reading a lot of books. Like, my, like on my birthday, I released one guide. From code to consciousness, bridging the gap between artificial intelligence and superhuman productivity. That book actually emphasizes the way the banking industry, the health sector can be able to actually optimize, reskill themselves to be able to move from the conscious method that they are doing now to coded processes that will mm -hmm. see that they have much more efficient systems. So reading, education, 
getting partnered with um, companies that actually have this type of processes ongoing, we see that they take right. a lead with mm. this upcoming technology. Okay. All right, now, so, um, uh, Rume, now, many experts, um, a school of thought uh, believes that uh, the future of work will involve collaboration between humans and artificial intelligence. What might this collaboration, what, what, what might it look like, really? Yes, there is going to be that synergy between artificial intelligence and humans in the place of work. And it will be a situation where, okay, um, instead of me truly, you know, just like you have in an assembly line, instead of me to maybe be, um, there's a process I need to complete at that end. I can train my artificial intelligence to start completing that type of process so that it frees me up for much more creative work and much more um, innovative process. Maybe you might have produced an AI that is specialized on doing, taking something from point A to point B and giving feedback to point C. And that is all that, because for artificial intelligence, there's supervised learning, there's unsupervised learning, and there's reinforced learning. Your artificial intelligence bot might have maybe had a supervised learning. And beyond that, it might not be able to do much. But you collaborating with our artificial intelligence robot that you might have created, we see that, okay, you, taught, you must have taught it to do this type of task so that whenever you are not around, it can perform that task in your what, in your absence. So that way, the, you will see that it can perform, that collaboration will be there because it is performing some tasks for you mm. and it is making your work much more efficient while doing those tasks. All right. Let's still talk about um, the prevalence of um, AI at the workplace as it becomes very popular. There are a number of ethical considerations that need to be taken into account. How can companies and organizations ensure that their use of AI is ethical and responsible? Okay, organizations and companies can ensure that this use of AI is ethical by seeing that they don't breach the policies that have been set by um, government, that have been set by bodies that are actually in charge of set of this type of policies. You know, you don't want to have a situation where you breach people's privacy, their data, you sell out this data because the AI is drawing it out. There are, in, there are policies that have been set that you must safeguard your customers' data. You must safeguard your customers' information. You should not trade that out for just mere um, few dollars. And if you don't do that, you see that you ha you don't have situations like the Facebook saga and possibly the one that the Amazon people had at the point in time that they had data breach. So just them fulfilling their promise because you really don't know. It is it is a thing of integrity for companies at the moment because. Except these companies are caught selling out this data, they would not even say it. So I think the company just needs to just have much more integrity in protecting customers' data, and it will be good. It's still Business Insights on PLUS TV Africa. We're looking at artificial intelligence and, of course, all the beautiful things that it can do or bring on at the workplace. A lot of people have different conceptions or misconceptions concerning it and how they feel it will affect the future of work. But we're here to break some of those uh, myths and uh, to let you know that um, it is actually a welcome development. I still have Rume Dominic, uh, certified uh, uh, blockchain expert and, of course, a metaverse uh, expert. But I'll take a quick break right now. When I come back, we'll be talking a whole lot more on the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. Thanks for staying with me, Rume. Thank you very much for having me. All right, now, AI, uh, they say, has the potential to transform what we call the gig economy by making it easier for individuals to find work and for companies to find workers. How might AI impact the future of the gig economy, that's uh, like small jobs, part-time jobs, people who are just looking to, for some temporal jobs. How can AI impact on the future of the gig economy? So, you know, the artificial intelligence helps in smart decision-making process. To be able to match these people that are looking out for bigger opportunities and people that are looking out for the smaller opportunities mm. become something that artificial intelligence can do seamlessly because of the high level of smart 
intelligence process or decision making process that it has. And when you now build softwares or products that can be specifically designed to solve this type of problems, you can see that that becomes the thing of the past because all of the code, the, all of the code, the smart contracts, you see that it is working to actually fulfill that type of purpose. All right, now, still uh, uh, on AI, uh, people believe that it is likely to automate many routine tasks in the workplace, freeing up workers to focus on higher level tasks. What types of tasks are most likely to be automated and how might these change the nature of work? <laughs> For example, let's say, you, we, I spoke one of one earlier, the traffic, just like we won't have in Lagos, traffic waters, their, ta their job is gone. Then I think personal assistance, a lot of their jobs will be gone because um, recently I, I had to, I wanted to fill out something for one of our company's um, social media manager. So I sent it to one of my personal assistants to say, okay, please quickly do this for me. But you know, this was a blue tick. You need to even tick twice for you to understand that the message I delivered. And I think because of the network, it had not gotten to the other party. And before it got to the other party, some just told, told me that, hey, Rumi, why don't you actually just try using AI to optimize this work you want to use for your social media consultant? And I just picked it up, put it on air, and in less than one, two minutes, I got the results for it. Meanwhile, the message had not even delivered at the other party's end for the WhatsApp. So it might eliminate jobs like the work of personal assistant because you have much more personalized AI assistants. And then you can see that maybe jobs like maybe proofreading, um, um, script writing, uh, maybe writers, because you have a lot of AI writing bots now. These people might go out of job, except they now start understanding how to use AI writing tools. And then they now start using the AI writing tools to be able to get their own writings better, or to be able to see how they can get their personal assistance role better using AI tools. Then they will still be, able, they might still be able to stay in the game. Okay, fine. Uh, let's talk about uh, money now, cost implications and all of that. Uh, is it something that would actually affect the bottom line of maybe uh, small and uh, medium scale enterprises? What's the uh, cost implication really to have AI in uh, most uh, workplaces? Well, at the moment, the barrier to entry is um, still a bit high because you cannot really learn about this artificial intelligence without using a lot of data to maybe learn online because there are majorly no schools offline now that are teaching it, especially in countries here like Nigeria. So you need a lot of data in terms of um, megabytes to be able to learn some of these things. And then these companies might need to hire experts like um, authors like myself now, which is um, which just finished this particular book now. And then I might come expensive, and then maybe they don't have that budget to be able to maybe do that. So um, these are some of the things that are suppressing it. Education quickly, because not everybody is willing to climb the new curve of learning. And once you cannot climb that new curve of learning, because you don't want to actually stress your head to learn, not to remain in that old um, system, and you will see that these things will be see that these companies might not be able to level up and then they will die a slow death because they refuse to innovate. All right, thank you so much, uh, Rume, Dominic, for all of uh, the mm -hmm. insights that you uh, always bring on the show. Uh, Rume, Dominic is a certified uh, blockchain architect and metaverse expert. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for having me. It is indeed our pleasure. So yes. as we go on the show today, there is the need for stakeholders to harness the value of facility management as it has the potentials to transform the nation's economy. This was the position of the president of the International Facilities Management Association, IFMA, Shegu Adibari, at the third edition of their Advocacy Day held in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that. I'll see you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.